All right, so we're pretty much done with modeling the head. If we press one on our keyboard, this head just exists in low poly still. We still have to smooth it, but we'll do that at the end after we're done modeling the, the entire character. We duplicated this reference earlier so we can see the head beside uh, our model. So I'm just going to uh, move this down for now. So I want to see the, the reference behind the character. I'll do the same thing with the side view. So what I like to do is get the main torso in first, the main torso and pelvis, and then we'll extrude the arms out and then the legs out, and then we'll continue with the rest of the body after. Okay, so we'll open up our modeling toolkit and let's go to extrude. And I'm just gonna click this button here to get our, our world orientation for the manipulators here. We wanna leave a polygon where we can extrude the shoulders out. So I'm only gonna go out so far. And again, we're gonna reshape this and sculpt this later. But before we start extruding any further, we're gonna just delete these faces. Now I moved those apart, so we're gonna have to just go to the front view. You can go into the front view and snap to grid. Turn on your snap to grid. And you can just snap those right together. And make sure you turn off your snap to grid. I'm just gonna separate these a little bit just so we can easily get in and delete those faces later. And I'm just gonna keep extruding. You can hit G on your keyboard to repeat the last tool that was used. I'm just going to space these in equal distance apart, these extrusions. I'm just going to extrude all the way down until we get to about his hips, and then we can spread these out and widen it later. So I'm just going to keep hitting G on the keyboard. All right, so now let's go in and just delete all these faces on the inside. And then we'll snap those vertices together. Okay, so we're good now. All right, so just like we did with the head, we're gonna block in the rough shape. Continuously push and pull vertices and faces and edges to form our rough shape for the torso. And we'll do the hips as well, the torso and pelvis area. And then we will uh, we'll work on the arms and legs after that. I think at this point, I'm gonna start using my soft selection tool. So we'll open up the soft selection, we'll turn that on. We don't wanna pull our edges out because we're gonna get that seam. We wanna try and make sure we keep these two faces even with each other. The first thing I'm gonna do is just thicken it out. Just go to a volume level where it's not pulling the front of the body too much, but it's getting the sides. And I'm just grabbing these three vertices so that we don't get a seam. All right, so in certain areas where the edge loops are close together like this, you might want to turn off your soft selections. You can see that it's all just going together, and I really want to smooth this area out. We don't want it to pull the body apart. We want the selection to drop off before it hits the center of the body. I'm going to go with something around probably 0.6 and then I'll just test it. I'll pull it and see if it's pulling the body apart. It still is pulling it apart. So we'll go to maybe 0.4. Even though it's not, doesn't appear to be pulling the body apart, it might be doing it like very, very slightly. Before we smooth the, the model, we're going to make sure that all of our center vertices are snapped to the grid. So that'll be a step that we do later. But for now, we really just want to get the model roughed in. You can see we had our soft selection set pretty low, so it didn't pull out some of these edges and vertices. So I'm just going through and just making it a little bit more even. 
It's making sure our edge flow looks nice. And I can see it's pulling apart the center, but we, again, we can fix that later. Keep your edge flow in mind. You want to make sure you have nice rounded edge loops all the way around your model. Okay, so now we have a blocked in torso. I'm going to snap those center points together. You just do that in the front view. It's the easiest way. You can see where they're not together. I can see a couple of imperfections in the edge flow here. You won't worry about it too much right now. Fix that all later just to go over and refine it, but we're blocking right now. So let's just get the shoulders set up so that we can extrude the arms. You can see that we have these two edge loops that are relatively close together. And that's gonna be where the base of the neck is. This will be the last edge loop for the neck. We're just gonna snap some of these vertices to this grid line here. I'm gonna turn on my snap to grid. And let's just snap them out here. Do it in the front view so that they're even in the Z axis. This is gonna be the the face that I actually extrude the arms out with. So I want to make sure that that's flat in the z-axis, just so things are clean and neat. So I also want to widen out this face a little bit before I start pulling the arm out. Remember we snapped these together in the front view in the z-axis, so I don't want to move them this way. So let's go back to our modeling toolkit and hit extrude. And I want to pull this straight out. So we're going to hit this button here to get our, our world orientation for the manipulator here. And we'll start pulling that out. We'll just go it a little bit. Now one thing really important to consider in regards to edge flow again, anywhere on the character where there's joints like the shoulder, uh, elbow, wrist area. We want to have a lot of edge loops, so a lot of mesh in that area so that it bends nice and smooth. Some modelers like to model the arms down on a 45 degree angle, and that's just so that we can minimize the amount of collapsing we have under the armpit later when we bind the skin. But I also want to make sure that the shoulders are working well when the arms go up. So I'm going to model the arms straight out and we'll fix the armpit collapsing later. Okay, so when we get to this point, we want to make sure that the upper arm for the model is long enough so when we drop it down, it's going to actually match up with this drawing. And generally, the elbows should come down to uh, the bottom of the rib area where you think this character's ribs should be. So the ribs will probably come down to around here. We want to keep that uh, in mind when we're modeling so that the anatomy is correct. And then the fingertips should be just above the knee as it is here. You can select all of these vertices for the arm. Go to your rotate tool, and if you hit insert on your keyboard, you can move the pivot point to the armpit for this selection of vertices and then insert again and actually rotate it down just to do a quick check. You can see that it is pretty close, maybe a little bit too long, but actually it's not that's not rotating where it's going to rotate from when it's rigged. It's going to rotate from the center. So that, I would say that this is, it's coming down a little further than it's going to once it's rigged. So I'd say that that's just about perfect. I would err on the side of too long than too short. So just control Z to get the arm back straight again. So as I mentioned earlier, we want a lot of edge loops in here for where the elbow is. So what I'm going to do is just continue extruding for now, and then I'll add some edge loops after we've completed the arm to the wrist. I'm 
just going to click off. Again, I'm going to test that length. I want to make sure the arm is the right length. Okay, so it's showing a little bit long, but I would actually say we'll just maybe shorten it a little bit. Okay, so let's just undo that. Let's bring it back up. We'll bring the elbow and the arm in just a little. And that should be fine. Like I said earlier, it's better to err on the side of longer than too short. All right, so now let's make sure that the arm thickness is looking good. This is a cartoony character, so it's not going to be super realistic human anatomy, but we want to make sure that it does have some form to it, some nice form. Most important part is that we have enough edge loops in here so that the elbow bends nicely. So let's add some more in here. We'll go to our mesh tools and insert edge loop tool. And for the wrist, so I like to just sort of have them cascade out a little bit further. Right at the area where it's going to bend the most, we want them closer together and then you can have a couple of loops that are a little bit further away. I'm going to create an edge loop in the center because I'm going to narrow out that arm a little bit. We'll create an edge loop here. There's more muscle at the top of the forearm near the elbow, so we're just going to bring that back a little bit. Okay, so I want to get a bit of an elbow pit. So I'm going to go to the top view. All right, so that's the elbow pit. Let's give him a bit of an elbow. Let's bring this out a bit. Just a matter of adding in edges, deleting edges, collapsing edges, and then moving some of the vertices around. Just sort of experiment and get what you need. All right, so we have the torso and the arms blocked in and refined a little bit. We'll go through and refine everything. We'll give everything a, a final refining pass for appeal. So making sure that it looks good and that it's technically sound. And we'll do that right before we smooth the model. So now we're gonna start modeling the pelvis and we're gonna model the pelvis in a way that sets us up to extrude the legs out. So if you think about the way your pants crease, we wanna make sure that our edge flow is similar to the way your pants crease because that's the way your, your body actually bends. It's the way the top of your leg bends. And that'll set us up nicely to extrude the legs out. I wanna get these faces to be completely flat. So I'm just gonna select some of these edges and we'll snap them down to a grid line and then we'll just bring them back up. So I'm gonna turn on my snap to objects. I can only do one at a time. So we'll just snap these to this, this grid line here. I'm just gonna select them in the perspective view and snap them in the front view. Now that they're all even in the z-axis, I can grab these, and just drag a box over them, turn our snap to grid off, and we'll just bring that back up. And now we can rotate it. And you can see it's breaking apart there. We're not going to worry about that just yet. And now at this point, I'm just going to snap these to the center. I'm just going to grab these two, bring them down. I want to make sure that we don't have a major seam happening here. And what we could do is snap the three of these vertices to the center grid in the side view, just so we know that they're all even in the x-axis. And then turn our snap to grid back off and bring them back to where they're supposed to be, somewhere around there, just to make sure we don't have a seam. We'll do the same thing for the back. Turn our snap to grid off and then just drag a box to get all three of those and just bring them back. Now we know that there's no seam happening there. And then we'll hit extrude. Now I don't want to extrude the legs straight out like this. So we're going to click on this here so we can extrude straight down. Now again, we're going to have a lot of bending in this area. The character is going to bend uh, from the top of the leg here. So we want to have a lot of edge loops. So we don't want to extrude too far away because we're going to extrude again. We'll do it again. So you can see how it's very similar. These edge loops are very similar to the creases in our pants because that's the way our legs bend. And 
You can see obviously it's very thick on the side view, but let's just fix that up before we keep extruding. I'm just getting the 3D model to match our reference, just keeping it on, keeping it on model with the, with the reference that we have, and then going through and just fixing some of the edge flow. Yeah, the whole bum and crotch area is a little bit tricky, but uh, you just have to make sure that you don't end up with too much of a seam, and it sort of gradually comes out into a rounded leg shape. Okay, so I'm actually going to straighten these vertices out a little bit. I just want to have them all snapped so they're straight. Then you can rotate them again later. So now that they're all straightened out, we can rotate them. So you can see why edge flow is so important. I can see that I got a bit of a front bump here. We just want to tone that down. And let's continue on with the knee. Now remember, we want to add a lot of edge loops here. Alright, so we just finished shaping the side of the leg and then if we look in the perspective view here, you can see that it's, it's flat in the front. So we're going to go through and just shape the front of the leg now. Alright, so let's go back to object mode and check this out. We'll hit 3 on the keyboard to smooth out our model. Let's move on to the hands and feet. 